This is awesome. Am I am I on now? I think you're on. Yeah. Yeah. This is <laughs> This is real life, bro. Real life. I'm so technically gifted. Yes. Aren't aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is this is how most of me feels right now. <laughs> That's good to that's good to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man. I thought I should get on the computer, then I had it sideways. Mm -hmm. One day at a time, man. One, One day. day I'll get this figured all out. Yeah. <laughs> so um Yeah, how are you doing today? Hmm. Whatever side of you wants to answer, how are you doing? Let's see. Um, how am I doing today? Hmm. I feel a little bit of anxiousness mm. uh, kind of playing in the background today. I feel this sense of, um, yeah, anxiousness and maybe a little butterflies in my stomach. Uh, I feel definitely out of control. Um, I think I feel a little sense of boredom which is usually a sign that I'm, I'm pretty angry about something. So that's always fun. Uh, what else am I feeling? My hands feel a little tingly, mm -hmm. mm, cold, uh, maybe a little wet. That's interesting. Yeah. Par for the course, man. <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel I always feel a sense of uh, nervousness whenever I do any anything like this. At least in part, there's always this sense of, uh, "Am I enough? Am I going to say the right things? Are people going to like me? Are people not going to like me?" Uh, so I, I get to enjoy all those feelings. I think my five year old is vibrantly well right now, and uh, yeah, I'll let I'll let the forty one year old in, in me parent him. And, Take care of the five year old. Um, I don't know how to respond <laughs> other than congratulations. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, to, to give you some context for, for the question and the topic today, mm -hmm. I was going from Munich to Israel and I had to go through security. And the second I walked into the security uh, gate, so to speak, I noticed that there's two floors, there are armed policemen on the top floor, armed policemen on the bottom floor. I'm questioned for like 35, 40 minutes. Then I go through like the TSA kind of checkpoints. And then I'm getting my bags checked and uh, they have to do a full search on my bags, which means they pull out everything in my bag and make sure that everything's um, secure. So I'm talking to this woman next to me and I start talking about coaching and life and some perspectives that I have. And I shared with her that there's no difference between what's happening internally and what's being reflected externally. And I said, for whatever reason right now, I'm going for this deep uh, security search or check. And then a little bit after they came out and said, here you go, here are your bags. So I felt like at peace after this, but during the whole time, there's all these questions like, what if there's something in there I don't know? What if they don't let me into Israel? What if they send me back to the States? And so my question or what I'm curious about is your perspective on how to be secure in ourselves from a day-to-day -day perspective. Wow. <laughs> I thought of you. This, I was going through this shit. I was like, this is a perspective for Jator. <laughs> Man, there's so much, so many things came up for me when you were, when you were sharing. I appreciate your uh, reflection too. That mm -hmm. was cool. You know, uh, something that comes up for me immediately um, around security and uh, self-security, uh, and I, I appreciate your experience. I'm going to change it to one of my experiences because it helps me get a little bit yeah. more food for curiosity. Um, 
I get a weekly massage and it's deep tissue and it's quite frequent, frequently extremely painful. And I notice as I'm getting massage, I notice when the practitioner digs into the area where I feel some pain, I notice the, the rest of my body kind of tightens up or I notice that I want to tighten up the musculature that she's digging into um, to reduce the amount that she can actually get into it. And what that means for me is, is also a very beautiful metaphor for uh, our ability to explore ourself, right? This idea of security, this idea of security of the body and how it protects itself, how we protect ourselves uh, from a physical perspective, how we protect ourselves from an emotional perspective, from a, a thought perspective, maybe a spiritual perspective or an intuitive perspective. And as I'm getting this massage, these parts of me want to come in and reduce the amount that the practitioner can dig in. Uh, so essentially creating security and protection around what might be underlying there in my body. What, it, what is the pain that I don't want to feel? And in my perspective, one of the ways for us to become friends with our own security system is to do exactly what you did, was to notice how you're feeling in that moment as they're opening up your bags or pulling you out of line, checking your, uh, what's in your luggage. Because if you can become comfortable with your own self-security, what happens is it becomes okay. It becomes okay that you have aspects of self that are there to protect you from going too deep, too fast. Uh, there's a saying in, in the psychological coaching world, and the saying is, you can never drill too deep, but you can drill too fast. And one of the perspectives that come up for me in this moment is some of us who do this work might actually criticize self for not being able to go fast enough. Or said in another way, I might criticize myself when I'm on the massage table and not allowing the practitioner to get as deep as she uh, can get into my musculature to release it. Instead of creating security within self by accepting that I have self-regulating mechanisms to protect me, to slowly allow this stuff out. It's like there's parts of us, at least in my experience of myself and working with many people, that want to chase the finish line, want to not have security measures, why do I have security measures? Why am I afraid of diving into myself? Why am I afraid of my mental and emotional shadow self? Why is that? It shouldn't be that way. Rather than getting to a place of saying, no, it's necessary. It's necessary to protect yourself to, interestingly enough, find yourself. If you imagine all of the perceived pain and trauma and separation, if you imagine all of that that's stored in your mental and emotional self, in your physical body, in your organs and tissues, if you were to imagine all of that perceived pain, if you were to imagine all of that being exposed to you in one single moment, my guess is your nervous system would shut down and you'd die. You'd immediately just check out it would be so overwhelming to all of your systems that I don't think you'd, you're, you'd have a choice. You would just check out. So this perspective of all of our ego parts allows us time, space, security, checking in, going through lines, taking our time, to slowly peel this stuff apart, to slowly look through our metaphoric luggage, to slowly look what's there, to take things out, to put things back, to become friends with our own security system, 
uh, rather than to become enemies with it. When I go through security or when I run to the police, what do I do? Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for being secure. Thank you for checking my bags. Thank you for pulling me out of the line. Is there a sense of singling me out? No, there isn't. <laughs> Not for me, there isn't. Because the way I see it is these people are doing their jobs and that job is necessary from a security perspective so that we can be safe in the same way the job is necessary from a mental and emotional perspective to create security so that we can be safe to slowly get into our luggage, interestingly enough, the luggage that we lug around everywhere we go in life. Mm -hmm. right? The luggage that I have about getting on and doing a live with you and, and feeling a sense of uh, fear uh, almost every time. Every time I teach or share or do a, a, um, a retreat, no matter how much I share, I always notice there's a part in the background that feels afraid and that's okay. Rather than needing to run away from that fear, disregard that fear and say, that fear isn't necessary. For me, that fear is extremely necessary and my own self-security system to allow that to come out slowly is also necessary. Wow. <laughs> hmm. So, yeah, where do we go from here? <laughs> like, what's next? Like, how has that process evolved for you over time? Because, I mean, to say thank you when you're getting singled out in line to say thank you when you're getting pulled over or the police are asking you questions. I think that's a pretty big step for some people, yeah. for myself even. You know, it, was, it was really reflecting on the other day. It was pretty intense to be there for that two hours and be going through that in-depth security check. So. Yeah, you know, I remember, I think it was about 12 years ago now, maybe more, 41 to... 31. I must have been 27. And um, I just got back from a, a Vipassana retreat, a 10-day silent retreat. And um, uh, there's a few things I like to do in life. And one of those things is drive fast. Right. I like fast cars. I like to drive fast. I enjoy it, what it represents to me. So I'm driving fast and I get pulled over by a cop. And um, I'm sitting there and I'm noticing... I. I just got back from Vipassana, right? So I'm super present to myself. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm, I'm getting this ticket and I'm thinking, okay, you know, paying attention to what I'm feeling, paying attention to, of course, I have some fear. Of course, I have some shame. Of course, I have some wanting to externally blame the police policeman for doing his job, which I think is hilarious. Mm. And... I was sitting there and I thought, well, how could I do this differently? How could I do this differently? How could I change this situation and change my perception about what's going on? And I thought, in that moment, what I thought was, wow, what is it like to be a police officer? And I thought, damn, that must be a really hard job. Um, you're you're basically trying to secure people in a, in a sense, C create safety for people. And the way most people experience you or see you is you're a jackass and you hate everybody and you're always, you know, doing all kinds of things that are up in opposition to what our ego desires want. Right. I, I should just be able to, to, um, drive as fast as I want to with no consequence. And so that job has got to be really hard. And I know some police officers and, and the way that they're treated generally by the public is, is got to create some, you got to put some barriers up. You got to start to protect your heart or else you're going to be in a lot of <laughs> damage. Mm. 
And so I was thinking about all that. And I was like, God, that must suck. Like you just pull somebody over for getting a speeding ticket and this person's pissed off at you, which really they're not pissed off at the police officer. They're, they're having whatever, you know, variables are going on around that subject. Right. I thought, well, how do I do this differently? So when he came back to my window and he gave me the ticket, right? It's probably a $400 ticket, US. I said to him, I said, you know, I wanna, I wanna let you know that I really appreciate the job that you're doing. I wanna let you know that it must be really hard out there dealing with what you deal with every day. And, yeah. and, I've ne and I said, I've never thought about that. And I just wanted to say, you know what? Thank you for doing your job and thank you for looking out for me. Mm. And he was a little stunned. <laughs> But then he softened up, man. He's super softened up. And cops typically are really hard. Uh, and yeah. I, I'm not saying that as a, as a criticism. You've got to be hard in that job. Yeah. I mean, you, you go to, you're going to war every day. You, you go to war, you, you need reactivity. You need all the things that we, a lot of us are critical about and judgmental about. You need that to survive in that job. It's, it's the job. So they tend to carry a very hard exterior to protect themselves, which I get. And this dude in that moment just softened up and I could see it over his face. At least that was my experience of him. And he looked at me and he said, thank you. And he said, thank you for acknowledging that. Mm. And for me that if we take that same, that same mm, symbolism, Mm -hmm. And we start to look at turning that internally. And we start to look at back to our, what our conversation a little earlier, our, our own security systems, the, the cops that we have inside of us that are there to protect us, even though it might not feel like that. If you can have the awareness of taking a breath, relaxing into it, and asking that part of yourself, what are you here to share? What are you here to protect me from? Um, and to connect with that and to thank that part, the interesting thing for me is that that loosens up the amount of security or the amount of resistance that we need to have to aspects of self that we're afraid to see or that we're afraid to get in contact with. It makes beautiful sense to me that we're afraid to see these aspects of self that we have criticism about because <laughs> they're used to being criticized. Yeah. Right? These parts of us that are just like these cops or just like the security mm. at the, the airport are used to being criticized, projected on, and being called all kinds of names. So they have to put walls up to protect themselves, just like the aspects of ourselves that are doing the same job that what do we do to them? The same thing. We criticize them. We put them down. We say they're wrong rather than learning to understand why the behavior is there. So if you have a part of yourself that you're super self-critical of, i.e. even if it's a security aspect, mm. It has to hide. Go back to being a, a kid and being criticized when we're kids or ex the experience of being criticized when we're children. Do you think that makes us want to come out more or, or hide more? My guess is it would want us to be pulled within more, to hide more, to go deeper. Uh, to hide deeper so that we're not continually being criticized. So a lot of us have lots of self-experience externally and internally of self-criticism, shame, blame, etc. And that makes us very afraid, those parts of us, very afraid to come out and express themselves, to come out and to be seen. Said in another way, many of us, have aspects of self that don't trust 
ourselves. If you don't trust yourself, at least in terms of these in internal children, don't trust your adult self because your adult self treats your inner children the same way you experienced your parents to treat you, society to treat you, cops to treat you, security to treat you. They're going to have to hide and they're going to have to separate and they're going to have to have their behaviors to feel some sense of control. And these behaviors then continue to show up in our adult lives. And the adult in us says, well, I don't understand what the hell is going on. I'm an adult. I shouldn't be doing this behavior anymore. Yet another aspect of us is expressing that behavior for a very powerful purpose, which is it's how I learned how to survive. It's how I learned how to survive in the environment in which I grew up and that behavior was very purposeful. And until you start to create connection and trust with those parts of self, they will need to express in their same fashion because interestingly enough, at least from my perspective, they also need the experience of feeling criticized and not enough so that they can matter because that's how they learned how to matter. <laughs> so th this is the same place where, where insecurities come from, is what you're saying. Oh, I love that perspective. It's such an interesting word, right? Insecurity. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was thinking about it too, is like, how do we feel secure in ourselves? And it's not how do we feel insecure, but almost like why? Or I guess even how do we feel insecure? What if one of the paradoxes of insecurity is that it actually helps you feel secure? Yeah. But if you're so used to feeling insecure that that creates a sense of control and security, what if that's part of the paradox. In an environment which I feel out of control, I can create insecurity, which is a pathway that helps me feel secure because I know I can control that feeling. Whereas letting go of that feeling feels much more unpredictable and paradoxically even more insecure because at least I know the feeling of insecurity and I've been there before. So it helps me feel a sense of security even though I feel insecure. It's like when I get on with you on these things or, or I'm teaching or whatever I'm doing, presenting somewhere, the part of me that needs to feel my insecurity paradoxically is creating a sense of security because I know that feeling well. Mm. And I get to have then the courage to step in and parent that part of myself and step into the unpredictable, right? I got mm -hmm. on um, with you and you sent me a message on Instagram. You said, are you cool with the topic? And I was like, I don't even know what the topic is. <laughs> because one of the things I've found for me around my security measures mm -hmm. is if I know the topic and I know the questions, I actually create even more insecurity within myself to feel secure because then I feel a sense of pressure of I need to talk about this specific topic and I need to know all this stuff about this topic. Whereas if I allow it to be a little bit more unpredictable, I don't know what's going to come up. Interestingly enough, I feel more secure in that. Yeah. I feel less pressure. Uh, which probably comes from some time in my childhood of doing a presentation in school or, you know, need, I remember in uh, college needing to do presentations and needing to teach to a class, etc. And all the pressure I put on myself mm -hmm. to perform. So these are security measures that we put on ourselves that most of us in my experience to this day still beat the shit out of ourselves for having. If you start to look at behavior as necessary 
Right. It is a game changer, but most of us look at our behaviors through the lens of our family dynamic and our family of origin and the values that we learn from our family or our culture uh, or our, our kind of external family. And we judge and criticize ourselves through that value set. And one of the biggest game changers for me has been if you judge and criticize your past mm, decisions in life, mm -hmm. know that you're judging your past self based on today's values. Then you've got to start getting into, you know, where do your values come from? Where did you learn them? Are they your values? Are they your parents' <clears throat> values? Are those true for you? Are they society's values? Are those true for you? Do they serve you? Do they not serve you? Who do you want to be? How do you want to move in life? Do you want to be different? Do you want to be the same? Those are all um, questions you can ask. And the freedom lies in being okay and, and, and allowing yourself to move out of self-criticism and self-judgment negatively and even positively, right and wrongs, and allowing yourself to get to a place of, hmm, I wonder why that I continue that behavior and how does it serve me still? And that's the security measure, right? That's the security then pulling that part out of line, mm -hmm. opening up the luggage, going through it, and then having a dialogue, you know, in that back office around, oh, well, hey, I found, you know, I found this bottle of Advil. Is this something that you still want to take? Yeah, you know, I, I still need my Advil, actually. It helps me numb out. I don't feel as much pain. And I'm okay with that. Cool. Advil goes back in the luggage. Well, mm -hmm. what about this? What about this? What about this? And then you start to build this trust with self rather than security and fear. You start to build trust with self around what's in your luggage. Mm. And what's in there is okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like you said, to not to judge it based on today's standard is like a not necessarily a bad comparison, but it's not it's offset. Like there's something off about it. It's not in balance. Yeah, because you know, my guess is many of us who will check this video out mm -hmm. are doing self some type of self exploration. And maybe your values are changing. Maybe your perspective is changing. Maybe how you treat yourself is changing. And if, you, if that's happening and then you're looking at your old behaviors or things that you've done in the past, the things that you house under the word mistake, just know that if you're housing under the word mistake, you're, you're actually shaming and blaming a part of self rather than saying, hmm, that's a decision I made when I had a different value set. And it was necessary at that point in my life to learn the challenge and benefits of that decision. I wonder if I do it differently today. Mm. And some of these behaviors, right, that cause pain or negativity in our lives, we tend to judge those extra neg negatively and be extra critical of them. Right. What if behaviors are in our lives for as long as they're necessary until it's time to change them? What if we start to take that perspective rather than saying, I have to change these things? What can I learn from this behavior? How is it still serving me even though it feels super uncomfortable? And that's a different type of security guard, right? At least mm -hmm. <laughs> that's one that's a little softer maybe and hasn't had so many experiences of doing their job and being criticized for it every single moment. 
God, you S, what, what do they call those people? The TCA, TSA people. You TSA yeah. people are jerks. No, yeah. <clears throat> they're not. Mm. They're doing their job, which is to protect you. <laughs> if you can allow that image and start to like move out of the image of, well, I shouldn't be pulled out of line and why are they singling me out? And these people are all just jerks. <laughs> I mean, if you want to stress yourself out going through <laughs> travel, be my guest. Or you could just change that game and say, man, you know what? Thank you for looking out for me. Mm. Thank you for pulling me out of the line. It's the same thing with my credit card, right? I just got, my credit card just got shut down while I'm here in Denmark. Mm. And I'm like, well, well, that sucks. <laughs> but when I, I, I call the credit card company and, and I'm not pissed. I, I called them and I asked, well, what's going on? And they said, well, uh, Mr. Pierre, we saw some strange charges. Uh, we sent you a text message and we didn't get a message back. So we shut it down. I was like, oh, my God, thank you. Thank you for looking out for my money. Mm. Rather than. F you for the inconvenience of looking out for my money. Right. And it's the same thing internally, man. Mm. It's the same thing internally. Becoming friends with your own security system. And then over time, just like that cop, the, the security system that's been so used to being criticized, judged, and put down will have moments where you say thank you and authentically thank you, not just the, the mm. jibber jabber straight from the head talk. I'm talking about from right. your heart thank you. Mm. A real genuine, the words are almost irrelevant. The feeling is there. And as mm. you are offering that to yourself from a feeling place, that part of you, that cop in you, hardness and protection and walled offness will soften. And that cop will start to come to your, your window and say, how's it going today, man? You were speeding. <laughs> Do you want to die? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be just a game changer. Mm. Wow. Jeez, Jator. <clears throat> Always thought provoking, man. <laughs> I'm just stumbling. Like, I'm like, oh. What if, like, do I consider, like, the next time insecurity comes up in my life to say thank you to it? Like, what, what are you here to show me the next time fear show, comes up? It's like, thank you, fear. Like, what are you here to show me today? The next time, like, that security system goes off, be like, thanks for letting me know that maybe I shouldn't jump off these rocks in Maui right now. Like, well said, yeah. man. So, where, geez, bro. where I learned this at least in, in kind of hindsight. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in kindergarten, I was a very, um, I, I still am, very wild and rambunctious person, right? I don't, mm -hmm. conformity is cool. Uh, I have a very defiant aspect of self, so the conform, conformity I, I definitely push up against, which I'm still curious about. But I'm five years old and I'm growing up in Berkeley, and uh, the class that I'm in uh, has this huge window, and the window has trees and birds, and I'm, and I'm five years old, so I'm looking out the window. I'm five, right? She's over here talking about one, two, threes, and ABCs, and I'm, I'm, I want to be swinging and being in the dirt and rolling and doing cartwheels, so I'm just looking out the window, and sometimes I would just stand up and not pay any attention to her. And was just looking out the window, just imagining myself outside, not confined in this room. Hmm. And Miss um, Pittman was her name, which is interesting, Miss Pittman. And so Miss Pittman would feel out of control. What is this student doing? Not listening to me, being so disrespectful, right? So she'd get triggered, get pissed off. So what'd she do? She would come, she would walk over to my desk where I was standing and she would grab my forearm and she would squeeze the shit out of my forearm and force me to sit down, force my five-year-old into his seat. 
What do you think I learned at five years old? I learned strong, powerful lessons of don't be yourself. Sit down and shut up. Listen to authority. Don't listen to yourself. Don't have an imagination. Hide. Hide and fit in. Or else you're going to get your forearm squeezed and be forced to sit in your place. Talk about security. Jeez. So all of that happened at five years old. Also, think about my association at five years old with the classroom. So when I do things like this, or when I teach for the Czech Institute, or I teach a retreat, or I teach for the Cresser Institute, a lot of this stuff metaphorically feels like a classroom to a part of me. So in my subconscious mind, in the background, my five-year-old is feeling afraid that if I'm really myself and expose myself, Miss Pittman's going to come around and squeeze my forearm and force me back into my seat. So it's one reason why I, get, I share that. I share that often. I share my insecurities. I share my fear. I share my... Uh, my pain, I share that I'm not perfect, I share that I don't have it all figured out because what that does is it helps me acknowledge my five-year-old and instead of pushing him away, it lets him know that 41-year-old Jatur, who is strong, powerful, thoughtful, methodical, loving, and heartfelt, is there to protect him no matter what. Mm. So I get to show up and do weird filters, my hat sideways, and do whatever I want to do because it's allowing myself to be me mm. and breaking the fear of that Miss Pittman is a bad security. Miss Pittman was actually a teacher for me in the future to connect to my five-year-old self to learn this new way of navigating life. Mm but I don't know if I would have that perspective if Miss Pittman wasn't there to put me in my place. Yeah. <clears throat> so thank you to Miss Pittman. Thank you, Miss Pittman, <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. Um, geez, is there anything else you wanted to add to this whole conversation on security or insecurity <laughs> or like? Mm. I think we covered a lot, man. I, th I think, think I'm going to go lot. sit down and have to rewatch this video a couple of times. <clears throat> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I think one thing I'd like to share that I've been seeing kind of a lot in social media. Um, and that's just like, there's a perspective right now that's being shared a lot, which is um, don't conform, be weird. Uh, yada yada and that's cool it's a cool perspective maybe and what if the message is really allow yourself to be who you need to be in that moment if you need to conform conform if you need to be weird be weird if you need to hide hide if you need to be seen be seen if you need to use filters use filters if you don't need to use filters, don't use filters. I mean, yeah. fucking loosen up. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to be yeah. who you need to be in that moment. Mm -hmm. You know that saying, only God can judge me? For me, that means only you can judge yourself. Yeah. Mm beautiful well cool, uh, <laughs> Jator is always <laughs> the infamous Jator it's been a pleasure <laughs> to sit down with you I think that's my next tattoo man I'm just gonna get like infamous <laughs> on my neck I, that's gotta be like a you know that's gotta be gangster <laughs> I dude <laughs> when you get a neck tattoo let me know all right <laughs> that shit's crazy bro <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't go to the neck, man. My boy just got, he has his whole neck and he just got his whole head tattooed. And I was like, wow, man, that's intense. Yeah. 
I'm not too sure about nah. that. That's, I'm not that's a neck. Pretty... I'm not a neck tattoo guy yet. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know, dude. I <laughs> <laughs> I got two tattoos and they're on my on my left thigh, so I have like two uh, two bands, but mm. that's it. We'll see what's We'll up. talk about tattoos next time. That'll be fun. Tattoos. Right? What do tattoos mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Chator. Well, until the next time, brother. I hope that. Uh, <clears throat> well, I know every. <clears throat> I know everything's gonna be good for you. So. Or it might be a shit show. We'll see. It might be a shit show. Hopefully, you stay <laughs> on rails. <laughs> All right, my friend. Good to see you, brother. Likewise, man. Be well. All right. Ciao. Peace.